So our discussion for today will be about the DC biasing of BJT. So we have the fixed um, fixed bias configurations. We have the emitter bias, voltage divider bias, collector feedback, the emitter follower, and the common base configuration. So let's start with the meaning of biasing. So I'm sure a lot of you or all of you are already familiar with the word biasing. We have discussed this in our when we have discussed the diode. So biasing is the um, application of DC voltages to establish a fixed level of current or voltage. Now for transistor amplifiers, the resulting DC current and voltage establish an operating point or the Q point on the characteristics that define the region that will be employed for amplification, meaning the ones that we have solved for the current and voltages, the input currents and the output voltages or the output currents will be used to graph our Q point and find the load line in our graph. Okay, so example of a Q point, here we have the various operating points within the limits of operation of a transistor. So this is VCE versus IC with different values of the base current. And we have here some points A, B, C, and D, which are probable operating points. Now in the active mode, A is not acceptable, obviously because this part here is already, uh, the transistor is already operating in its saturation region. And D is not preferred due to its proximity to the max power values. So usually when we solve, when we, as we go along in our analysis, we will be seeing that most of the uh, common Q points are this point B here, or probably point C also, but most of the time it's around here, the point B, it's the most probable operating points. But it really depends on the values also that are given in the circuit. So let's discuss the first bias. With the first configuration, we have the fixed bias configuration. So here we have the input signal. Okay, so we, we have here an NPN, NPN transistor now. So we have the uh, emitter that is being grounded. So this is a common emitter. And um, it is biased in such a way that your VCC is your uh, supply here for the whole circuit. Your RB is connected to your base. RC is connected to your collector. And we have two capacitors over here. And this is your output, uh, AC output signal. Now, if you want to analyze this circuit and get the expression for our input current IB and our output IC and VCE, we have to analyze it in its DC equivalent circuit. So in order to do that, as you can see in the right figure, we will represent the capacitor as an open circuit for DC because idea it's not charging yet. So that's for the DC equivalent. So that means if this is an open circuit here, this will not affect the current that is flowing through your RB. That means the current that is flowing through your RB is simply IB because again, this part here is an open circuit. The same way that your, um, your RC, the current flowing, that the current that is flowing through your RC is your IC because again, uh, there is no current flowing over here. All right, so let's go first, analyze first the base emitter loop. Meaning we isolate first the input side of the uh, the whole circuit. So let's isolate this part here. Okay, so we get this equivalent circuit for the base emitter loop. Okay, so we have here the VCC, remember? Now if you want to extend it or just to have a proper visualization, we can extend it in this manner. Okay, so if we use the KVL then we can get an expression here of negative VCC plus IBRB plus VBE, okay, equals zero. All right, now we want to get the expression of our IB because this is the only unknown values, uh, sorry, unknown value for our circuit. 
So we have an IB equivalent to transpose VCC minus VBE all over RB. Okay, so this is now our expression for IB. Now you don't need to memorize this because um, all you have to do is just analyze the circuit in its most basic uh, approach and you can get the expression of IB. So that's for the base emitter loop. Now, let's go to the collector emitter loop. So if we use the KVL again, clockwise, so we can get negative VCE minus ICRC here plus VCC equals zero. Okay, if we want to get again the VCE because this is the unknown or the output uh, parameter, we can get VCE transposed to the other side. Uh, will we get negative uh, equals VCC minus ICRC? And this is now your expression for VCE. Okay. So, okay, just to take a few notes on uh, the notation for the double and the single notation, um, because there are some problems that require you to solve for VC or VCE. Now, if we have VC, VCE, that means that is the voltage from your collector terminal up to your emitter terminal. Now, if we want to get the VC, alone not the double uh, double notation then we need to get the uh, then that, that is the voltage from your collector current to the ground okay from your collector current to the ground now it just so happened that for the fixed bias configuration we don't have a value for ve because there is no component here. The emitter current is connected directly to the ground. Meaning for VCE, that is equivalent to VC minus VE. Take note of this notation. Okay? So in this case, for the fixed bias configuration, we have a value of VE equals to 0 volt. That means in this case, VCE is just equivalent to VC as you can see in this circuit, in the output side of our fixed bias configuration. Okay, it's also the same with the expression of your VBE, that is equivalent to VB minus VE. Now again, in this case, our VE is zero, so VBE is just simply equal to VB. Okay, this is now our load line for the fixed bias configuration. Now, if you already solved a certain value of VCE, for example, this is your solve VCE, and then this is your um, value for IC with a given um, IB. Okay, if you already solved an IB using this expression, then, for example, we have this arbitrary point here. And then getting IC and VCE, we can plot the Q point somewhere here. Then how do we connect or how do we find the load line? How do we find the load line is first we have to get this value of our um, BCE. Okay, BCE when IC is equal to zero. Okay, when your collector current is equal to zero. Now. The value of that is we can get from our VCE expression, which is equal to VCC minus ICRC. Okay, this one. So when IC is equal to zero, meaning VCE is simply equal to VCC. That is why we have this expression. This is your point when your IC is equal to zero. Okay, now... Um, the point that is crossing your y-axis is this one. This point is when your BCE is zero. 
Okay. Now the first one is your IC is zero because again you only cross this point on the x axis. And the second point is you only cross this point on the y axis. So that means x is equal to zero. VCE is equal to zero. So using again the expression VCE is equal to VCC minus ICRC. If this will be zero, then we can get ICRC is equal to VCC. Getting the IC, we have VCC all over RC. Okay, so this is now our value. Now if we connect the three points, this is now our load line for the fixed bias configuration. Okay, next. So, this is an example of fixed bias configuration. We need to determine the following for the figure 4.7. Okay, we need to get IB and IC, VCE, VB and VC, and VBC. Okay, so we are given the values for VCC, RB, RC. We have, um, what else? We have the beta value. Okay, so these are very useful to get the expression or to get the value of IB, IC, and VCE. And, and from here, we can get the other unknown values. Okay, let's start with getting the IB. So remember, we have the expression IB is equal to VCC minus VBE all over RE. So if we replace that one, uh, not RE, but RB. Okay, RB. So we have the VCC equivalent to 12 volts minus uh, VBE is always 0.7, approximately equal to 0.7, and then divided by RB, which is 240 kilo ohms. Okay, we will get a value of IB equivalent to 47.08 microamperes okay and then the next unknown value that we need to get is the ic now ic if you can remember its relationship with ib is given by beta ib right and we are given by our beta value which is 50 multiplied by ib which is 47.08 microamperes so that is equivalent to 2.35 milliamperes. Okay, the next thing or the next parameter that we need to get is the VCE. So we have the VCE equivalent to VCC minus ICRC. VCC is 12 volts minus IC, which is 2.35 milliamperes, multiplied by RC, which is 2.2. Okay, we can get a VCE equal to 6.83 volts. All right. And then the next one is get VB. Now, VB, we already proven a while ago that it is just equivalent to VBE in this configuration because VE is equal to 0. So VBE is equal to 0.7. So it's also equal to VB. And VC is still equal to VCE, which is just 6.83 volts. Now, the last thing or the last unknown value that we need to solve is VBC. Now, we can use, we can use here the um, KVL for, uh, to get the VBC from, your, from here, your base collector um, terminals. But we can make use of the expression that VBC is just equivalent to VB minus VC. And that is 0.7 minus 6.83 volts. So VBC now is equivalent to negative 6.13 volts. And this one implies or indicates that th this is in uh, reverse bias, which is needed for our circuit to operate in its active region. So 
um, by getting a negative value, we have verified that it is in its reverse bias for the base collector junction, while the base emitter junction is forward bias. Okay, that's all for the fixed bias. Okay, this is the second configuration for the DC biasing. We have the emitter bias configuration. So it's basically the same with the fixed bias configuration, except that we are adding now a resistor that is connected in our emitter terminal. That's the only addition from the fixed bias configuration. So um, this is added to increase stability of the whole circuit. Now, in analyzing the circuit for the emitter bias configuration, it's just the same with the fixed bias. We um, get the DC equivalent again, and then this is an open circuit for the two capacitors. And um, we isolate again the input side, which is the base emitter loop. Okay, so we will get an expression using KVL here. We will get negative VCC plus IBRB plus VBE. Now, this, uh, this whole expression here is already your circuit or your expression in the fixed bias, right? But for the emitter bias, we add more um, expression, which is your voltage across your RE given by IE RE equals to zero. Okay, so if you can recall the relationship of your emitter and the base current, we have IE is equal to gamma IB, or in terms of beta, we are uh, that would be beta plus one IB. So why do we need to change the IE to IB? It's because we want to get the expression of IB. Okay, so we have negative VCC plus IBRB plus VBA plus beta plus 1 IB times RE. Okay, we can now then factor out IB. That would be RB from this expression and then we have beta plus 1 RE. And then transpose VCC minus VBE. Okay, to get the full expression, we divide this by this expression. So we have VCC minus VBE all over RB plus beta plus 1 RE. So this is now your expression for the base current of our emitter bias configuration. Okay. Next, we go to the collect collector emitter loop. So we have um, again KVL. We use KVL here. So we can have negative IERE minus VCE minus ICRC plus VCC is equal to zero. Now, we can also um, assume or approximate IE to IC, okay? If you're given a beta value, you can get the alpha, but it's uh, the values will be very, the, I mean, the difference will be very negligible. So let's just approximate IE to RC. So let's substitute IE with IC so that we can get an expression of um, VCE in terms of IC and some other parameters. We can have only a one current um, present in this expression. So we will get, we can continue minus VCE minus ICRC plus VCC is equal to zero. We have VCE transpose and then we have VCC minus ICRC plus Sorry, that is minus ICRE. 
and that would be VCC minus IC, factor out IC. So we have RC plus RE. So this is your VCE equation. Okay, for the load lines, just the same with the fixed bias that after getting the IB value, okay, with the corresponding VCE value and the IC, we can plot, this is your ICQ, VCEQ, just to denote that this is your Q point. So, this is now your um, load line with the values here for the VCC. So, uh, I mean VCE, which is equal to just VCC because if you can recall, the VCE for emitter bias is equivalent to VCC minus IC, RC plus RE. Now, this is a point where IC is equal to zero. So if this whole expression is equal to zero, we will get a VCE equal to VCC. And then here, on this point, this is a point where your VCE is equal to zero. Okay, so we can get VCE. We can copy the previous um, equation. And then we get zero here. So if you want to get IC, that is just equivalent to VCC all over the quantity RC plus RE which is this one. So this is the load line for the emitter bias configuration. Okay, let's have some, some example. So for the emitter bias network of figure 4.23, we need to determine IB and IC, VCE, VC and VE, VB and VBC. Okay, so let's start with solving the IB. Okay, IB is VCC minus VBE all over RB plus beta plus 1 RE. Right, so we can have 20, this one, minus 0.7 all over RB, which is your 430 kilo ohm, plus beta is 50. So 50 plus 1 multiplied by RE, which is 1 kilo ohm. We will get a base current equivalent to 40.1 microamperes. And then getting IC, still equivalent to beta IB. We get, uh, we have 50 multiplied by 40.1 microamperes, and that is 2.01 milliamperes. Okay, and then getting VCE, VCE is equal to VCC minus IC. RC plus RE. So that is 20 minus IC. We have 2.01 milliamperes multiplied by RC, which is 2 kilo ohm. This one plus 1 kilo ohm. We will get VCE equivalent to 13.97 volts. Alright. So the next one is we can we need to get VC. Okay. Now VC we are uh, we already learned a while ago that that is your voltage from your collector terminal to the ground. So if this is your collector terminal, then from that point to the ground, that is your VC. Now if um, we can have a KVL over here, where this is your 20 volts, okay, and you can get an expression here of 20 volts subtracted 
by this voltage here, we can get a VC. Okay, because your 20 is just parallel to this node up to the ground. Okay, so if, again, VCC subtracted by this voltage here, which is your ICRC, that is your VC. Okay, so we can have minus 20, sorry, 20 minus 2.01 milliamperes multiplied by 2 kilo ohms. So we will get a VC that is 15.98 volts. Okay, the next unknown value or parameter is your VE. Okay, how do we get VE? We get it from the expression that VCE is equal to VC minus VE. So VE from there is VC minus VCC. Uh, sorry, VC minus VCE. Okay, that is 15.98 minus VCE that we have solved um, previously, that is 13.97. So we can get a VE of 2.01 volts. Actually, we could also check VE if it is correct based on the value of this one, voltage drop across your RE. Why? Because VE is just simply your voltage from your emitter terminal up to the ground. That means that is simply your voltage across your RE or your 1K ohms. So if we check that, IE times RE, that is just equivalent to 2.01 milliamperes times 1 kilo ohm. That is just equal to 2.01 volts. So it's the same with this one. Okay, the next thing is the value of VB. So VB, we can get that value from the expression VBE is equal to VB minus VE. So VB is equal to VBE plus VE. So we know that VBE is 0 0.7 plus VE 2.01. So that is 2.71 volts. And then lastly, we need to get VBC. So VBC is just VB minus VC. That is your VB, which is 2.71 volts minus VC is this one, 15.98 volts. So VBC is negative 13.27 volts, which is again an indicator that the collector base junction is reverse biased. Okay, that's all for the emitter bias configuration. Okay, moving on to the voltage divider bias configuration. We have here two resistors that we have added instead of just one. So for the emitter bias configuration, we have R1 without the R2, right? So that would be the emitter bias configuration. Now for the voltage divider bias, we add a second resistor from your base to the ground. So this is now your DC components of the voltage divider configuration. We have here the VCC R1, R2, RC, and RE. Now in order to use the expression in the emitter bias, we need to translate or um, draw or get the equivalent, Thevenin equivalent circuit of our expression for the R1 and R2. Okay, we need to get the Thevenin equivalent. Now, in order to get that and transform that into this one, which is just your emitter bias configuration, if you can remember, this is exactly your emitter bias configuration. And then, we can now use expression for the IB or for the yeah for the base current. So before 
we can use the expression for the IB. First, how do we translate or um, get the equivalent Thevenin circuit of this voltage divider circuit here to this equivalent, RTH and ETH, that is series with each other. So to get that, we can just get RTH equal to just the value when you parallel R1 and R2. Okay, that is R1 times R2 all over the sum of these two resistors. And then to get the voltage or Thevenin equivalent voltage, all we need to do is get the value or the voltage across your R2. And the value or the voltage across your R2 using voltage divider is just R2 times the VCC all over R1 plus R2. And then this will now be just like your RB in the emitter bias and this is also like your VCC in the emitter bias. So then we can use IB that is instead of VCC we use ETH okay minus VBE all over RTH instead of RB plus beta plus 1 RE just like your emitter bias configuration and then your VCE is just the same because your output side didn't change it's still the same with your uh, emitter bias okay so we can just copy VCC minus IC times RC plus RE okay it's just the same with uh, graphing the previous configuration we graph the value of our uh, resulting base current with the uh, corresponding IC and VCE so this is your Q point okay let's have this example so determine the DC bias voltage VCE this one and the current IC okay for the voltage divider configuration of this uh, figure okay let's start with of course before getting our IC we need to know the value of our IB and in order to get the value of our IB we need to get the Thevenin equivalent circuit for the resistor and the voltage so first let's get the RTH value that is R1 times R2 all over R1 plus R2 okay so R1 and R2 are these um, two resistors Okay, just to name it. So this is your RC and this is your RE. Okay, R1, we have 39 kilo ohms multiplied by 3.9 kilo ohms. And then the sum of these two. So we will get a value of 3.55 kilo ohms. And then we have the Thevenin equivalent voltage that is R2 VCC all over R1 plus R2. So R2 is 3.9. So make sure that you don't interchange the two resistor values because you will get a different value of ETH if you um, wrongly input the value. So VCC, we have 22 volts all over R1, which is 39 plus 3.9 K ohms. So that is equivalent to two volts. Okay, and now we can use the expression for the base current, which is ETH minus VBE all over RTH plus beta plus one RE. So that is 2 minus 0.7 all over 3.55 K ohms 
plus beta plus 1, that is 100 plus 1. RE is 1.5 kilo ohms. So we get an IB of 8.38 microamperes. Okay, since we already have a value of IB, we can get IC, which is just beta IB. So beta is 100 multiplied by 8.38 microamperes. We get 0 0.84 milliamperes. And then lastly, for the VCE, <clears throat> that is VCC minus IC multiplied by the quantity RC plus RE. Then we have 22 minus 0.84 milliamperes times 10K plus 1.5K K ohms. So we have a VC equivalent to 12.34 volts. Okay, that's for the voltage divider bias. Okay, the fourth one is the collector feedback. So we have this configuration. Uh, it's just basically the same with your emitter bias configuration, except that for our resistor connected to the base, it's not the other terminal is not connected to your VCC. Instead, it is connected to your collector. Okay, so it's called the collector feedback because it, this resistor is connected to your collector and to your base, both to your output and to your input. So this is your um, resistor denoted by RF, which is the feedback. Okay, so solving for the base emitter loop, we need to use KVL on the input side so we can get the expression of minus VCC plus now this one remember that your for the emitter bias the current flowing through your RC is just equal to IC but in this case the current that is flowing through your RC is no longer just IC but it is IC prime because in this node here IC is flowing through this on your collector terminal and IB is flowing there. So that means your IC prime is just the total of your IC and IB. So if you get the expression using KVL, we have negative VCC plus IC prime RC plus the current that is flowing through your RF is IB. So IBRF plus VBE plus IERE. -E. Okay, so now we have here the expression IC prime is just equivalent to IC plus IB. And if you can recall this expression here, the sum of the collector and the base current is just equivalent to your emitter current. Okay. However, from the previous configurations that we discussed, we just assume that IC is approximately equal to IC. Okay, because again, it's the, the difference is negligible. So that is still, it's still uh, equal to beta IB. Okay, so uh, we just replace all the values of IE and IC to beta IB to get the expression of IB. So we have negative VCC plus beta IBRC plus IBRF plus VBE plus beta IBRE. Okay, so we factor out IB. We can get beta RC from here and then plus RF and then plus beta RE. 
then transpose VCC minus VB then the final expression is given by VCC minus VBE all over RF and then factor out beta because it, it is common we have RC plus RE so this is your final expression for your base current for the collector feedback configuration okay let's go to the collector emitter so using KVL we will get minus IERE minus VCE and then we have minus IC prime RC and lastly we have plus VCC all right and then again we approximate IC prime to RC which is approximately equal to IE and then replace everything with IC so we have minus ICRE minus VCE minus ICRC plus VCC is equal to zero. So you get VCE is equal to VCC minus IC. Now factor out IC. So that leaves us with RE plus RC. Okay, that's for the collector feedback. So we need to determine ICQ and VCEQ for the network for um, of figure 4.41. So this is the collector feedback. So we it's easy to distinguish again because the resistor to, to, uh, 250 kilo ohm is connected both to your base and collector. Okay, so solving our IB that is equal to what we just solved VCC minus VBE all over RF plus beta RC plus RE okay VCC is 10 minus 0.7 all over RF is 250 kilo ohms plus beta 90 multiplied by RC which is 4.7 kilo ohms plus RE which is 1.2 kilo ohms so we get an IB equivalent to 11.91 microamperes in order to get the IC that is just simply beta times IB so we have a beta value of 90 multiplied by 11.91 microamperes we get an IC of 1.07 milliamperes. Lastly, we get VCE equal to VCC minus IC multiplied by RC plus RE. So that is 10 minus 1.07 milliamperes multiplied by RC that is 4.7 kilo ohms plus 1.2 kilo ohms that is equal to 3.69 volts so that's for our collector feedback configuration Okay, the fifth one is the emitter follower configuration. So this is your uh, connection for the emitter follower. Now remember in our discussion in um, about the common collector configuration where our collector is grounded and the emitter is added or the, um, there's, I mean the bias is connected to our emitter. Okay, so this is a common collector configuration, what we call the emitter follower. So our um, RB is still connected in our base to the ground. However, again, our bias is no longer in the collector side. 
Okay, it's not there anymore for the VCC because it is grounded. Instead, it is here in our VEE at, and it is negative because we need to forward bias our emitter junction because this is an NPN transistor, so negative, connected to negative. Okay, so let's have the input side. Okay, we can we can solve for the IB and VCE using this circuit alone. No? So this is the DC equivalent of our circuit. So if we solve for the KVL, this loop here, so we can have IBRB plus VBE minus IERE minus VEE. -E equals zero and recall that our ie is equivalent to beta plus one ib just to express or to replace ie with ib so we have ib rb plus pbe minus beta plus one ib re minus bee -E is equal to zero so factor out R, uh, IB, so we have RB, sorry, did I say minus, okay, correction, sorry, this is actually plus, okay, because this is plus, okay, so we have plus, beta plus one, RE, and then on the right side, we have VEE minus VBE. So then we can have IB that is equivalent to VEE minus VBE all over RB plus beta plus 1 RE. And then on the output side, we can Okay, we can actually set this to because this is still your capacitor, uh, so collector, and this is your emitter. So this is your VCE. So if we if we uh, apply KVL here in this loop, we can get VCE plus IERE minus VEE equals zero. So we can get an expression of VCE that is equal to VEE minus IERE. -E. Okay, so let's have this example. We need to determine IEQ and VCEQ for the network of figure 4.48. So we have here the emitter follower configuration. Okay, so Solving for IB, we have VEE minus VBE over RB plus beta plus 1 RE. So our VEE is this one. This is 20 volts minus 0.7. RB is 240 kilo ohms plus beta is 90. And then RE, we have 2 kilo ohms. So we get an IB of 45.73 microamperes. So in order to get the value of IE, that is just equivalent to beta plus 1 IB. So that is 91 plus 45.73 microamperes. And then we have 4.16 milliamperes. And then getting VCE, that is VCC minus IERE. Oh, sorry, that's not VCC. That is... That is VEE. VEE. Okay, VEE. That is 20 minus... 4.16 milliamperes multiplied by 2.2 2 k ohms. 
So we get a BCE of 11.68 volts. Okay, so that would be all for the emitter follower. Configuration that we're going to discuss is the common base configuration. So we have here the um, circuit. So we have the input side, which is the emitter, and the output side is the collector. So if you can remember from our discussion of common base. So we have the resistor RE and then VEE. And then on the output side, we have RC and VCC. Okay, so here still we need to uh, use KVL here in this loop. But instead of IB, of course, uh, we are going to be solving IE. Okay, because the input current that is considered is already IE, not it's no longer IB because now base is the common for uh, input and output. Okay, so. Solving, we have um, VEE minus IERE minus VBE equals zero. So we get an IERE equal to VEE minus VBE. So we get the expression for IE as VEE minus VBE all over RE. Okay, that's for the base emitter loop because again, our emitter current is now the out input. Okay, for the output side or the collector emitter loop, we can um, use or we can have, we can consider the outer loop for our um, expression of voltages. So let's have negative VCC plus ICRC plus VCE plus IERE minus VEE equals zero. Okay, so to get the value of VCE, transpose everything to the right side except VCE, so we have VEE plus VCC minus ICRC minus IERE. Okay, so we can replace IC with IE. Okay, because it's approximately equal. So we have VCE is equal to VEE plus VCC minus IERC minus IERE. So finally, we can factor out IE. That leaves us with RC plus RE. Okay, so this is your final expression for VCE. Now, to get this value of VCB, we can have a loop inside. So we can have negative VCB minus ICRC plus VCC is equal to zero. So we have VCB that is equal to VCC minus ICRC. Okay, so we already have an expression for IE, VCE, and VCB. So we're ready to solve one problem. So here in this configuration, we need to determine the currents IE and IB. Okay and the voltages VCE and VCB for the common base configuration. All right, so we can start by solving our IE using the expression that we have solved earlier. We have VEE minus VBE all over RE. So we have four, this is our VEE, minus 0 0.7 all over RE, which is 1.2 kilo ohms. So we have an IE equivalent to 2.75 milliamperes. Now from this value, we can get IB because we know that the relationship is given by IE all over beta plus one. Okay, so we have 2.75 milliamperes 
all over 60 plus 1. That is 45.08 microamperes. Okay, so we already have IE and IB. So we move on to the values of VCE and VCB. Okay, VCE, our expression is VEE plus VCC minus IE RC plus RE. So that is 4 plus 10 minus our IE is 2.75 milliamperes times RC which is 2.4 kilo ohms plus RE which is 1.2 kilo ohms. So VCE now is equal to 4.1 volts. And then for the VCB, we have VCC minus ICRC. Okay, so we have VCC. We solve, we can solve IC using IE or using IB. We will still get the same result. So we have beta IB, which is equivalent to IC, and then multiply by RC. So we have 10 minus 60 multiplied by 45.08 microamperes times 2.4 kilo ohms. So finally, we have VCB that is equal to 3.51 volts. And that is all for the common base configuration. So, this is the summary table for all the BJT bias configurations. So remember, for the fixed bias, the very the very basic and simple configuration given by this expression. Again, you don't need to memorize this as long as you know how to use KVL and to analyze a circuit, then even if you're given different configurations, you will surely get the um, equations and the expressions of that. Okay, so this is the fixed bias, and then add, add some resistor to your emitter that will become your emitter bias and then again add some resistor over here and that becomes your voltage divider bias okay and then remove this one transfer it to your collector that became that becomes your collector feedback all right and then this is your emitter follower for the common collector where your um, your collector is grounded and your emitter is connected to your uh, VE. And then for the common base, this is your connection and your equations. Okay, so that's it for all the DC biasing configuration for the BJT.